Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bonnie Williams, and with me is my name is Maylin, Reverend Maylin, Pope Maylin. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing. Uh, actual thing worth a Google. Hello, everybody. I'm May Lynn, and with, with me, as always, is Bunford Williamsburg. We are the will they or won't they duo known as the Pope on Film Podcast. And this is episode 473. And what that means mathematically is that we have recorded 472 episodes before this one. And I know some of you out there may uh, be. A doubting Thomas may not believe that we have actually recorded 472 episodes. But look, here's the thing about that. Are you going to check? Are you no, really? you're not. You are absolutely not going to find this podcast on SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com slash the-pope-on-film. A lot of dashes. And check the episode numbers to keep us to honest. No, you're not going to. It's such a hassle. So just take our word for it. This, this is our 473rd you will, episode. You will believe it in the same way <clears throat> you believe satellites are blocking your prayers to Jesus. Yes. Yes. This October, in fact, fun little fact, this October, this podcast, the Pope on Film, We'll be celebrating 10 years. Yes. A decade. Our 10 year anniversary, a decade of the Pope on Film podcast. I can't believe it. But hey, 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 Bunny. Yo. Hey, Bunny. Look at us. Look at us, huh? Yeah. Who would have thought? Not ten, me. 10 years and not a single listener. That is is an amazing accomplishment. It's pretty impressive. It's yes. pretty impressive. And I thought that like having these babies would help, but like it's not helping at all. Look really? at these. I, the, I made those. The, the things that you have done for this show. Yeah. Yeah, like I didn't want to transition, but like I had to. Yeah. Fucking for ratings the sake are ratings. The show. Yeah. So flashback here's how the pope on film podcast started just in case you're just tuning in here's how this podcast got started almost a decade ago uh so i created my own religion in the mid 90s it was an internet faith based on the life and films of director edward b wood jr and for a decade or so, I got some major press about it. I was one of the big internet religions, and a lot of copycats sort of sprung uh, sprung up after the Church of Edward. Uh, Shatnertology was a big rival for a while. Yes. And then in Phoenix, ah, there was the Church of Body Modification. Mm -hmm. A bunch of, like, 20-something heavily tattooed, heavily pierced uh, douchebags who like to smell their own parts. Yes. And they thought and, that and they were, And swing around like the, by their nipples. Let's not forget about that. Yeah, and swing around by their nipples. They thought they were such big shit because they were on one episode of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh, hosted by A.C. Slater, I believe. But um, they were not a bunch even of the real ass. ones with Jack Palance. No, not the real one with Jack Palance. No, like the like the reboot. Oh, I like Jack Palance though. Like every time he said "believe it or not," it felt threatening. Believe yeah. it. <sighs> oh, God. Love. And that. and his and said. his hot daughter Holly Palance, which I'm Holly sorry Palance. I don't accept. Holly Palance? Yeah, I just it's fun I, to say, I, I do not believe that 
she sprung from Jack Palance's loins. Jack Palance's loins. Mm -hmm. That's something that you're not going to hear in a lot of the other podcasts. Out no, there. you're not. Not a lot of people out there are doing podcasts where they talk about Jack Palance's loins. That's my new band name, Jack Palance's loins. Yeah. We're kind of like uh, country punk. Yeah. Industrial, proto-gothic country punk. That's sort of our our sound. So uh, so your so your 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 dog ran away and is going to tear down the establishment. Yeah, yeah. But first, we're going to smoke closed cigarettes and walk around uh, New Orleans. Yes. I am going on tour this year, and I have shows all over so many different cities in Oklahoma. I also have a show in Memphis, Tennessee, in August. And then in October, I will be performing at a venue in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Uh-huh. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited to hear Bloodletting the Vampire song by Concrete Blonde while I'm in New Orleans. And also, um, I've been listening to the song Graceland by Charlie Sexton from the movie true romance i've been listening to that song non-stop well i've never been to graceland never took that trip because i'd rather think of elvis as a greasy memphis kid i've been listening to it non-stop and then my my plan is once i finally get to memphis i'm retiring the song yeah from my heavy rotation and i'm replacing it with that song walking in memphis uh-huh and then I'll listen to that nonstop because I'll be in Memphis. Very excited about that. I, I have always heard that Graceland is very underwhelming. Uh, I love the fact, and I've mentioned this so many times, and I'm going to mention it again. I love the fact that later in his life, Elvis became obsessed with the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah. And that he would force people, his friends, to come over to Graceland and watch it on his, like, fucking 30 television. But I love that idea of, like, uh, Elvis being all, oh, just wait till you get to the Knights who say neat. They're really funny, you know? Yeah. Uh -uh. Of, like, Elvis being a geek. Yeah. I mean, just all the talk about Graceland always makes it sound like this this huge, amazing palace, you know, just yeah, spewing Elvis everywhere, you know? And yeah. it's basically a big house. Yeah. Now, in the middle of our street, I appreciate Elvis for having something that's just a big house. You know, when he could have had, like, a huge mansion, like we picture it to be. Yeah. You know, or, like, Los Angeles or something like that he could have had. And he just, you know, like, okay, this is, this is on the big side, but, you know, nice, comfortable, you know. Yeah. I respect that. You know what? I would love to see a combination of Graceland and the Winchester House. Oh, that would be badass. The Winchester Graceland and Elvis went crazy like over the last like. He was able to get old and to live until he was like 90, but he went insane in his later years and started. Continuously building Graceland up. Yeah. With like fake one. Yeah. He he just keeps adding to it. Uh so anyway, the Church of Body Modification. They yes. were a bunch of uh uh ass face douche waffles. And then there's that big Lebowski religion, which is still around because people take the big Lebowski super seriously. 
Dude, I don't I'm... even remember what it's called, like Lebowskianism or some some shit like that. I'm pretty sure it's dudeism. Dudeism, that's it. That's it, dudeism. Yeah, but to be clear, the Church of Ed Wood predates dudeism. Yes. Yes. But but I have to say I respect them. I mean, the the dude is something worthy of building a religion over. Yes. Yes. And if you are going to live your life modeled after the dude, you could do worse. You could do yeah. worse. And people do. They do. Yeah. They do do. Yeah. And then I, my brother started a religion. Did he? My older brother not wanting Oh, that's a good point. I don't have an I don't have an older brother. Yeah. But if I did, he would have created his own religion because he was jealous of me being in like the National Enquirer or Premier magazine and shit. Uh uh Bizarre magazine and the UK, I don't know if they make that anymore because all magazines are going out of business. But uh, dudeism is still around, but uh, where's Shatnerology now? Where are the a-hole goths from the Church of Body Modification now? Uh, I know that online pop culture-based religion isn't a contest. Right. But also, I win. Yes. We win, Bunny. Yes, we do. We win. We're winners. I'm a driver. I'm a winner. Things are going to change. I can feel it. You and me together. That's Bunny, right. We win. And so being the leader of the Church of Edwood, Woodism, a lot of people have fought to host a podcast with me. Originally, the podcast, My Brother, My Brother and Me, was going to be My Brother, My Brother a cult leader in me. But I, I passed on that. Uh, welcome to Trans Night Vale. That was another one. They yeah. tried to get me. And, uh, you know, so many podcasts wanted me, and I kept saying no. I turned them all down. Then Bunny, Bunford, approached me and uh, had an idea for a show, a podcast. And originally, I turned Bunny down. But what sold me on the podcast was Bunny said, if I agreed to be on the show, that I'll get to grow my own pair of titties. Yes. And look at these babies. It was in the brochure. That's all, that's all podcasting right there. Bunny, ever the scientist. On the cutting edge of scientific achievements, Bunny has developed new technology that embeds tiny estrogen particles into the very sound particles of this podcast. Yes. And so when Bunny promised me honking hooters, massive mammaries, when Bunnington said, listen, do this podcast for 10 years and you'll have massive mommy milkers. That's yes. that was those were your words. Yes. Oh, almost exactly. I'm pretty sure it's in the contract. Yeah, and I I didn't believe funny, but hey, look at me now, dad. <laughs> He's dead. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, um G what a pointless opening to the podcast this has been. Uh, why was that the opening? Well, it's because I didn't have time to write a full, massive uh, intro. Because I am singularly focused right now, Bunny. Yes. Uh, Zen Cannabis pen in my hand. Not a sponsor. I'm singularly focused on one thing, and that's my big one-woman show that will be premiering this coming Saturday, March 9th, at Point A Gallery in Oklahoma City on 39th Street, right off of Route 66. I'm nice. very excited. I'm going to be reading some kids' books. I'm going to be giving away some stuff. I will definitely not 
be reading any uh, passages from my older brother's shitty autobiography that he wrote. I, nice. I definitely will not be doing that. This is the because first I've heard of it. A, yes, this is the first that you have heard of my brother of of uh what could possibly be my older brother's shitty autobiography. I that is of course a lie. I don't have a brother, and I don't believe he's written hey, one. You got this he, one. Huh? You got this one. You yeah, got a so, brother. So, don't make me don't make me hurt you. Yeah. So uh yeah, Bunny's my brother. But beyond that, like my brother certainly didn't write a a, a shitty autobiography because it, there are people out there that are just clamoring like, "Oh, you know what? I desperately want to read a book about uh, a failed karaoke host. Yes, who beats women? That is that's that's the type of of story that everyone wants to read nowadays. Oh yeah, they they are so flying I, off the shelves because so many people can relate. Yeah, so many people can relate. Uh oh, oh hey I was 15 when I lost my virginity to a 30-year-old nurse. I'm so badass. Actually, no, that's probably rape and assault, but you know what? Yeah. Whatever. You do you. But I will definitely not be reading any passages from my older brother's biography, because I don't even have an older brother, and I don't think he wrote an autobiography, and even if he did, I certainly didn't keep it uh, for emergency purposes so i won't be doing that but i i'm really excited i i'm calling my one woman show story time with maylin on tour a one former man show that's the name that i ended up with but i had a number of other names i wonder my... what they may be well, let me tell you. I've got a list here, Bunny. I've got a list of alternate names for my big one-woman show. Are you ready, Bunny? I am ready. Okay. Uh, this was the first one that I came up with. Maylin eats a whole ass pizza and cries. I thought that that would be a good title. To be fair, I was pretty hungry when I came up with the title. And I may have just wanted pizza. I, I, I would save that because that's for really a different kind of show. Yeah. Malin eats a whole last pizza and cries. Then uh, another alternate name for my big show. Holy shit, I got titties now. Yeah. I thought I, that I, was I, a good just name. Just going back to the last one. Yeah. I, I, I think that's definitely a title for a different show. And Oddly, it's for a show that you're not in. Nice. Okay. okay. This is a okay. show that someone someone will be doing around, you know, 2090, 2100, somewhere, somewhere in there, you know, where you have already lived your life and have been wildly famous. Wildly. And now somebody is wildly. doing the one woman Malin show on Broadway. And there you go. There's the title. I would like to think that if I ever did become hugely successful and like 60 years after I die, someone decides to make a play about Malin. I hope it's one of those weirdo shitty fantasy plays where what? Oh, look, a play that seems to show Maylin, Malcolm X, and Elvis having dinner together. You know, yeah. like one of those, what, Maylin and Albert Einstein? Uh, so here are some other names. I, I would like to see it be 
somebody who was portraying you, but like mm-hmm. they would be portraying you like as a tree. Nice. Okay? Okay. So that the entire play was basically somebody playing you and going yeah, through yeah. different acting exercises. I'm down with like that. Like after the I'm tree, down then you're then you're a frying piece of bacon, you know. Yeah. And, and there I'm down you with go. That. There's the show. This, this fucking thing is just writing itself. Yeah. Yeah. So I started thinking about because I'm a big movie lover. We've done this podcast for almost a decade now, and so I was thinking of some movie titles that could go for my one woman show. So I've got a couple of them. Transformers Rise of the Estrogen. It would be T R A N S capitals and then dash formers. Yes. Rise of the Estrogen. Then there is this one I'm really proud of Godzilla minus one minus Godzilla plus Maylin. I thought that was a great one. Mm. And then, I don't like, know. if Wouldn't it's you have to be like, like... Godzilla squared times I I I I forget. It's like a real yeah. mathematical equation. Yeah. I liked that one. The way that I saw Godzilla minus one minus Godzilla plus Maylin was if it's a successful one woman play, I can do it again in black and white. Oh. An all black and white version of my one woman show. It really, it really brings you know, new life to the show. Uh, here's an exciting one. Police Academy 8, Storytime with Mei Lin. Okay. Let's, it, it, this, this was a concept. What if I get a random movie franchise, reboot it, but have it just be my show? You know? So, okay. Police Academy 8, Story time with Mei Lin without any police in it. Okay. I thought that was a pretty good one. Mei Linception. Mei Lin discusses Mei Lin. Okay. How about this? I'm really proud of this one. The new Super Bowl. Like, fuck copyrights. What are, what are you going to do? Sue me? Yeah. I have no money. What are you going to take? My best of Slim Whitman LP? Yeah. My Godzilla VHS collection. I, when I wrote that on my podcast notes, I was thinking of fucking Mark Borchart from that documentary, American Movie. Legal okay. actions. He's looking through all of his bills. Oh, God, legal actions. That's all right. What are you going to take? My Night of the Living Dead book? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one, I, I, I got really close to, to, to using May Lynn's conceded all about me stage show. Because I feel okay. that in its very essence, a one woman show is kind of conceded, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's just me. I thought of having a bunch of like special guests and like some drag performers and some singers in between my stuff. But then I, but uh, a couple of people told me like, no, this is your show. You got this on your own. Make the focus on you. If people go to this show, it's going to be to see you. And I'm like, okay, okay. So, so there's that. And this is the final uh, alternate title from my one woman show that I came up with. The Waterworld Stunt Show Spectacular. That be may fair, be my favorite. That may be my be, favorite. To be fair, I did steal it from the Universal Studios show, The Water World Stunt Show Spectacular. The thing that I love is for the longest time, they had the Miami Vice Stunt Show Spectacular at Universal Studios. So finally in the 90s, they said, we got to get rid of the Miami Vice Stunt Show Spectacular and we need something more popular. I know, Water World. Yeah. That blockbuster smash hit water world that everyone loves. Yes. So I feel bad for them. 
but they just brought back the Waterworld stunt show spectacular. So, you know, good for Universal Studios. Do, Bonnie, do you have any ideas for alternate titles for my one-woman show? I, I do plan on sharing all of these at the show. Mm. So, if anyone who plans on going to my one-woman show on Saturday, March 9th at 8 p.m. at Point A Gallery in Oklahoma City, it, here's a little preview. It, the beginning it, of the maybe show. maybe just something simple and something actually very near and dear to your heart and just call it I May Lynn, come and look at my tits. Okay. Uh I May Lynn. Come and look at my tits. Okay, yeah. that's that's a good one. Come it's it's look. it's honest, it's direct. You know, and and yeah, like they're right in your face. Yeah, I, I changed it. I changed it a little bit. I may Lynn come and look at my titties. OK. But I'm proud of that. That's a good one. Do you have any other ones? Uh, yeah, no, putting no. Putting you on the spot. I, I, I'll, I'll workshop it in my head throughout the rest of the show. Okay, good, good, good. And yeah, and if you come up with any, feel free to just belt them out. Just belt oh, okay. them out. Okay. So uh, so that's my big one-woman show. I'm very excited about that. I'm singularly focused on that. I've decided that to... That was March 9th again, right? Yes, March 9th, 2024. The doors open at around 7.30. The show starts at 8.00. I'm going to be reading some classic kids books and talk about my uh, my transition from abused and molested child to depressed suicidal man to kick ass chick. Yeah. And I'm really excited about the show. I'm going to be reading some kids' books that have been my most requested kids' books. Ten minute warning. Ten and so I'm very, warning. very excited about that. And I decided to give away stuff. So after I finish every book, to make sure that people pay attention, after I finish a kids' book, I will be giving away things to the audience. It won't be anything big. I'm I'm pretty much going to go to the dollar store and get a bunch of weirdo crap and then just find things around the house. So, uh, hey, you won our big giveaway. Here is a um, My Little Pony sock. We Le just have one of them. Le Don't Le know where the other Quigley. one is. You know the name quickly. Huh? You know Linnea Quigley, right? Yes. yes Queen, I know Queen Linnea. Lorea... Ugh, I can't say her name a third time. Or yeah. she'll appear. Basically. She's like Candyman. She, she did that when she was she low on fucking money on her web website. <coughs> she was selling awesome. like $10 bags of, I forget what she called it, like Linnea's surprises or something like that. And that's what it would be. It would be like bottle camps, bottle caps, a matchbook. You that's know, awesome. Uh, 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 an old napkin, you know, just like a bag full of just basically junk. Yeah. That she I've, would sell to people for 10 bucks. I've been thinking about. I'm ending the show with a song. So like I'm on stage and I end with a song. The song that I want to do is science fiction double feature. Yeah. From the Rocky <laughs> Horror Picture Show. The problem is that it just seems so fucking conceited to end with a big musical number where I'm on stage and I'm singing this song and everyone claps at me. But also... It's a one woman show. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. You know? But what I was so. th what I was thinking that I am just throwing this out here. If you're on stage reading a children's book, 
especially a really positive up children's book. But then on a big screen behind you, you've like scenes from The Exorcist or Zombie. Nice. You know, like, and, and really just clips where pe- people are being ripped apart. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Let me tell you, my kids while, are while, fucking while pissed off. Winnie the Pooh is saying, oh, bother. I'm down with that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can use AI to... You know what? Now that AI is prevalent in our lives, I think we can finally get those naked photos of B. Arthur we've always wanted. Oh, thank God for that. You know, I'm going to be working on that during the break. I'm kind of excited. But uh, yeah, I know, and we... people are so afraid of like AI taking over. You know, like can we do really do worse than we're doing already? And, you know, also, I mean, like, and and also, there's the fact that like, oh no, AI is going to destroy us, bitch! It can't even make hands. No. So it's going to be a but while, really, but really, before right they now, take over everything. Right now, if your choices were Joe Biden, Donald Trump, or AI, uh, uh, I think I think the choice is obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Or maybe when I give away stuff, I'll make it like a trivia thing. So I'll pick someone random from the audience and I'll ask them questions. It'll be three questions and then the third one is really hard. So like, uh, question number one, what is my name? Maylin, correct. Question number two. Question number two, how you doing today? How about this? Correct. How about this? Question number three. Who was the Secretary of the Interior during Warren G. Harding's presidential administration? Yes. You know? Like, really fuck with them. Okay, how about this? Basically, my one-woman show's gonna be hell's a poppin'. (laughs) I'm not sure how you do this, but you have to get your audience in that, let's make a deal. Hell yeah. Okay, so then you can say, like... Who has a bobby pin? You know, and you can go over to that person, ask them a question, and take their bobby pin. And then you give that bobby pin as a prize to the next person. Hell, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Uh, I'm really upset that my therapist wrote a joke for one of the books I'm going to read, and it's fucking funny. Yeah. I'm a little bit upset about that. I'm going to give her credit during the show, though. But before we move on, before we take a break and move on to discussing this week's film, please don't destroy the legend of Foggy Mountain, the the uh, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning film. Please don't destroy the legend of Foggy Mountain, which is about to sweep the Oscars. Yes. Um, Madam Webb? Not that bad. Not that bad? that bad here's the thing here's the thing and i've been thinking about this a lot just because a movie isn't good doesn't make it bad (laughs) i came up with that when i was real fucking hot no not particularly but it certainly didn't work in morbius's case and i'm a little gun shy yeah but the absence of a movie being really good doesn't automatically make it a bad movie yeah uh, Madam Web, it's not good, but it's not that bad. And a lot of people are like, oh, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Obviously, you don't know bad movies like we know bad movies. Yeah. Two words, three, three words. Neil Breen motherfucker. Yes. So, yeah. So get the fuck out of here with your Madam Web yeah. shit. Yeah. Let's sit I you, thought it was fine. Let's sit you down and make you watch COVID killers. Okay. Fucking the Omnicron Killer. It's a sequel. It features the same guy. No, we are not. We are not. 
<laughs> it's having a limited theatrical run. It's not available to download yet. I know I've found bootlegs of this shitty ass film. That that movie goes over into the Adam Sandler box. <laughs> okay. Okay. I still I it, barely it, I'm I still have fucking PTSD from from the COVID summer. This it, COVID exploitation. That was fun. I like that. I like that. That was a good summer. Uh, I, so I, I wake up shrieking because I think I've been in an eleva- stuck in an elevator with a bunch of fucking strangers. Understood. That was a difficult summer. I need to start preparing our for this. Worst summer. That was literally probably our worst summer. And we did the summer of the worst movies. And like this still beats it. It still beat it. It still beat it. Yeah. We we did we we looked at the worst films on IMDB and that wasn't as bad no. as the summer of COVID exploitation, which was a, a term I came up with. Verbal copyright twenty twenty four, the Pope on Film Podcast and the Church of Edward. Um I've got some ideas for this summer, but I'm not saying any of them out loud. Wrap it up. We got seconds. Yeah. There's still a chance that Tim Burton might die and we do a Tim Burton summer. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. But anyway, that is it for our opening. We are going to take a short break, play some clips and some videos. And when we come back, we're talking about this week's movie. Please don't destroy the legend of Foggy Mountain, and I will be in a different outfit. So you can keep ogling me because I look crazy. I here I am with these puppies. Yes. And and I, how dare people not come to this podcast and stare at me? You bastards. <laughs> but we will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after these commercial messages. Mm-hmm. 